Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellums, Greeny Flicks Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my Bitsera espresso coffee machine. Um, there are some other videos that I've done, both in its operation and some maintenance, but this is going to be another maintenance video with regards to cleaning this attachment. This is the, the main thing that uh, that's responsible for um, making the coffee and that's where some cleaning needs to be done. All right, so this is called the group head and the port of filter goes in the group head so that's nothing unusual about a special machine. Um, what happens is that uh, eventually the oils in the coffee um, do get attached to the mechanisms inside the group head as well as inside the porter filter uh, underneath the basket as well. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, just checking out where all this gunk is built up and we're going to clean it out so that we have a nice clean machine ready for use. All right, so what's going to be easiest? Well, okay, first things first, we need some tools. I'll have some hexagon keys or Allen keys, uh, a screwdriver, Phillips head, a flathead screwdriver, and another small flathead screwdriver as well. So hopefully that'll be enough tools to get started. We'll do the easy task first, and that's to do with the um, basket within the porter filter. So the easiest way to do this is to get a screwdriver like that and just to lift it up like that. And uh, that will separate the basket from the porter filter. And then what we have inside is a whole bunch of gunk. You can see how dark that is. That's a lot of build up and that can be cleaned out quite easily. And what I do to clean it out is just use some stainless steel wool and that can be just used to actually clean out that with some detergent in the sink. So that's what I'll be doing. And I've got two baskets, so I presume the other one is going to be much the same. This is a single shot, the other one was a double shot. And this one doesn't get used as much, and so you can see it's not as dirty. All right, so we'll come back to that. Now, there's a couple of ways to clean this out. One is to actually remove the little screw that's underneath here, which is a flathead screw. So this is going to be too long to do that. You need a short this, like that. But you need to have a short stem so you can get underneath it. The other way, which I haven't done yet, uh, is going to be to remove these three. And then hopefully all this assembly will actually come down and you'll be able to pull it out and then dismantle it and clean it. It'll be much easier that way. All right, so the Allen key that we require, I'm guessing is about five. Nope. It's going to be a four, four millimeter. And the answer is yes, it's a four millimeter. All right, so with uh, when you're doing stuff up and undoing, you want to do it gradually rather than all of at once one screw and just to relieve the pressure and then you can undo it more. Okay, so if the um, if there's a lot of buildup of gunk, chances are this may not come down easily, in which case you may have to give it a bit of a tap for it to release. Uh, don't tap it with anything hard like a hammer because that's going to dent your chrome work. You're going to have to get something, a soft uh, plastic mallet. Oh, there you go, it comes off easily. That was easy. Um, you can probably see that there's a bit of silver and there's all dark. So that's all built up from the oils from the coffee grinds, um, which need to be cleaned up. There's a seal there as well. Uh, like with most things when dismantling, you've got to remember exactly how it's assembled because when I dismantled this now, that shiny bit was the closest to the machine. So there are three equal 
screws there and I presume that can be rotated like in any direction and it'll still be the same so now that's going to affect the position of this assembly here and if we rotate it 120 degrees what happens then that's out of alignment rotate again 120 degrees it's still out of alignment and rotate it 120 degrees again and then we find that this is horizontal so that's going to be easy to remember how to actually put this back because it only fits one way for it to be horizontal otherwise the holes won't line up okay so that's easy but you can see now I can actually undo this screw here all right so we'll just put it there and then we can unscrew it and voila okay and uh, all right look how dirty it is it hasn't been cleaned for a while that is so bad that requires a thorough clean a clean there is a gasket oil seal or oil ring a gasket rubber seal in there as well which needs to clean as well let's start cleaning up so there's my stainless steel scourer and we'll start by maybe cleaning up these porter filters and then we'll get on with the group head you can see it cleans up really quite easily and quite quickly there are powders and tablets you can get to soak uh, that dissolve into water and you can soak your entire porter fil filter in there and that will also dissolve some of the um, oils and residual residue that is uh, held that is that you can't get to with a scourer within the actual porter filter as well all right so that's been pretty good we'll do the same with the other one you can get these scourers in metal as well uh, ferret well yeah ferrous i suppose still um the type that actually rusts they are really rough so i wouldn't use those you have to get the stainless steel scourers that are available uh, because they are softer and they don't break apart and um, it's best not to use it on these chrome surface areas because you could still scratch that best using a soft sponge or something like that on the outside but on the inside it doesn't really matter all right now for the group head let's see how this cleans up there you go so you can see how much difference there is just by getting the scour onto the brass here how that cleans up and how dirty it is on the other side uh, there are sections that you won't be able to get to and that's where you use the powders dissolve and you can put all this into a solution looking very nice in the very corners here you can get that small screwdriver and just to get out that last little bit of residue in the corners here so we've cleaned that up now <laughs> once you clean it up you probably find that that's actually just sitting on top of this part as well so you can see that uh, that gunk has gone everywhere so we have to clean that up and clean that up and then it might be easier to get to the o-ring as well right so the other thing to remember is uh, in which way this was actually assembled so we've got, a sh um, you can see a little shoulder there. We've got the thick, larger diameter there and the narrower diameter there. The large diameter was sitting down in the group head. So at least that way we remember how it goes. And yeah, that's cleaned up okay. Right, 
raw. That's looking pretty good. Um, I don't think there's any point in taking the O-ring out because it's not damaged. It's nice and clean. If it was damaged, you could you could uh, literally cut the O-ring and take it out. It'd be easier to do it. If it's in good condition, just leave it in there. I've run the little screwdriver here down the very inside edge of the O-ring. So if there's any residue there, it's clean that up. There you go, there's some there still. That's nice and clean. Ah, yes, we'll do this side here. So there is an O-ring here as well. And it's easy to remove. Okay, so I'll just clean that one out. That's easy to come out. And then I can just clean that out. Let's put this back together. All right, so this was, um, that had to go back in like that. Oh yes, I've got one more thing to do. This little screen is looking pretty dirty right now. It looks sort of through there. You can sort of see that a lot of the holes are blocked. So once I clean that up, uh, the holes should be uh, more clear. A lot of the coffee granules and oils that sort of got in between the, the little fine screen here and this metal plate behind it. And to clean that out is almost impossible. So we just have to get a, a replacement screen. All right, well, I went to the local espresso shop and I was able to get myself a group head screen. It's the same diameter, so that's good. It's got a few less holes in it, so that's bad and compared to my other one which is all clogged up but what i did ask the professionals how do they actually clean these do they soak it in some sort of a caustic soda or something and they said no we just burn out the oil so that's what i'm going to attempt to do they said just do it in a well ventilated place over a gas stove top or something so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do it over the gas stove here and uh, let's see how effective that is in actually recycling this and then I can keep the other screen as a spare. There's going to be some noise now, I'll just turn on the exhaust fan. I have my pliers. And let's give this a go. Let's see how effective this is in actually burning out all the oil. Okay, so far so good, you can see all the smoke coming off, so I guess that's the oil burning off, to make it red hot, so any, yeah what, definitely burning. Okay, some black soot coming off, so it's... <laughs> Wow, look at that. That's a lot of oil in there. Oh well, just keep on burning. Eventually all the other residue that's in there should turn to powder. And once it turns to powder then uh, it'll be easy to clean. Obviously don't touch it with your hands, otherwise you're going to burn your hands. Let's see how red hot it's getting. Alright, so that's looking pretty good to me. I think I've burnt off everything that can be burnt off. And then we'll just wash it underneath. We'll wash it in the sink. Okay. have a look at the results look at that nice and clean we've got a completely clean filter now well that was easy much better than any chemicals just burn it out <laughs> that's a great tip if uh, if this video is good for nothing else that's the tip that you wanted to see i think when it comes to cleaning out your machine your espresso machine 
All right, so let's assemble all this and see what sort of results we get. Okay, that's in properly. So it goes like that. So as I said before, uh, make sure you just do these bolts up by hand so it's well positioned, evenly positioned. There is an O-ring that takes up the slack and it's just a matter of just doing that up a bit gradually. The O-ring does a sealing so it's just again finger tight, it doesn't need to be too tight. You'll know if it's too loose because then steam will escape which means you can just tighten it up a bit but definitely don't overdo it all right so that looks okay and if i take uh, one of the porta filters here put it in the basket and that should just fit in nicely which it does everything's lined up Time to turn on the machine and give it a go. Machine is on, we'll let it warm up now. Yeah, so burning off all the excess oils off the little filter that goes into the group head. Brilliant idea. Uh, it does, obviously, because there's a lot of heat that goes into the stainless steel here and the mesh, it does discolor it. Being uh, underneath in the group head, no one's gonna see it. So if it discolors and goes sort of gray blue it doesn't really matter so I wouldn't recommend that uh, burning process with the, with a porter filter if you're trying to get rid of any excess oil you're probably just better off cleaning it manually um, okay so this is my spare one so the new one that I bought that is a spare which I I just put the old one in that, that I cleaned so that should be good all right, so in the first instance, what I'll do is I'll just run some some water through. I haven't got any coffee in there at this stage. And we've got nice clear water coming out. All right. Let's see how it looks. Water's coming out evenly. Okay, across the entire filter, which is what you would be expecting. Let's uh, do a single shot cafe in my French crushed ceramic cups. Not paper. Okay. Single shots, I find that they're really fussy with regards to how much grind you put in there. It's got to be just right. Okay, everything's looking pretty hunky dory. Let's give it a go. Nice pressure. Exactly the right pressure that we want. We seem to have a nice pull. I don't necessarily go by seconds, I usually see what sort of grind I have and then determine. As soon as the uh, pour here starts to change colour and become more clear, then I usually turn it off. That should be a nice extraction as far as I'm concerned. Give it a bit of a swirl and let's, I'm not much of a designer here, but that's about right. And I reckon we've got a really nice cappuccino. I suppose if I want to add a little bit more there. Okay, no marks for design, but the proof of the pudding is always in the taste. Pretty good. I think I've succeeded. 
All right, so if it's the uh, first time to my channel, then do subscribe, press, press like, no, press, <laughs> press the bell. <laughs> and you'll be notified when the next uh, video is out. And if you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. I liked burning off the oil. That was my favorite bit of the video. What's your favorite bit? Do comment, I appreciate your comments. Um, my channel is outdoor life, four wheel drive, uh, outdoor adventures, motorcycle adventures, and photography. But of course, I sneak in one of these little lifestyle videos every now and then, particularly around coffee since that's one of my favorite pastimes when I'm at home or when I'm traveling. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers, bye.